Hello, hello. I hope you can find me. I'm going to try something while I'm waiting for you to find me. Just a wee bit of trouble here. <laughs> All right. I hope you can hear me. And I hope that the visuals are halfway decent. Is anybody there? I hope so. I restarted. This is our, or actually, this is Art Quilt. There we go. Art Quilt. Oh, good. Art Quilt Thursdays. And that Art Quilt Thursdays, we're back on. I get so afraid to start a new, um, to start a new stream because I don't know how you're going to find me and I get worried. But hello, everybody. All right. So I'm glad it looks better. And, oh, I'm so glad. Thank you, Karen and Cheryl and Linda for finding me again. I hope everybody else will. But it's, you know, it's no fun to watch a video. If it's all blurry and the sound is popping and all, that's not fun. So, anyway. All right. Let's get busy. Because I have a lot of fun to have with you guys. But as I was saying, we only lost power for two hours. I'm very grateful. Because, you know, oh, I feel bad for Texas. That's got to be rough. And I wanted to tell you that I managed to buy myself a protective glove. Because do you know that I have um, cut myself twice recently and one time almost did. I got lucky. So, you see us. Good. I'm so glad. So, I bought these. I got them on Amazon, and um, they was like two pairs for $10. So I thought that was pretty good. And they're made for oyster shuckers and fish um, fish cleaners or whatever, um, and sous chefs and things like that. And they're supposed to be a level five, but I got them instead of some big klutzy glove because they fit snug. and I feel like I can use my hand better. So I just thought I would tell you I did get these and I've got Miss Nadine's in, a, in an envelope to mail. So hopefully if we're not shut down tomorrow, I'll get them out to her. But I just want to let you know I did a good job. I did a good thing. So if I start cutting too much tonight, I'm going to put them on. So hello, everybody. All right. I'm so glad it's better. That was the right thing to do because I always get nervous that if I shut you down, I might never get you back. So let me turn this light off. Okay. And we are working again on our art quilt, our mountain meadow landscape. And I've been so tickled. I've sent so many of these patterns to people. So if you would like a pattern, I will send you one free in email. And if you just send an email to, whoops, uh-oh, <laughs> what did I just do? Hold on just a second. Okay. Send an email to our time. Whoops, it's not. Come on. You better act right, computer. Our time to quilt at, whoops, let me try it again, at pwc.com. All right, if you send an email to that email address, I will send you a free copy. And in part one, I show the technique for folding it to 16 equal segments, which makes it so very easy 
to then enlarge it, you just draw what you see in that square and you do the same thing to your fabric. You fold your fabric, whatever size it is, fold it in half, fold it in half, half and half and iron it, iron the paper, iron the fabric. And then it gives you these equal segments. And instead of trying to draw the whole thing, you only draw what you see in that one box. It makes it very easy. People who say, oh, I ca I'm not, I can't draw. You can draw this way. This is the best way. And I did it that way myself, too, because it makes it so much easier and you can make it whatever size you want. So I was sitting here today kind of playing with this area around the lake because I've got to get this area right. Now, let me pull it a little closer. I forgot that I need to get a little closer to y'all so that you can see it better. So hold on just a second, you guys. Let me move it down. All right, let me get my camera set up. It's so funny, when we didn't have power, I thought, oh, I won't be doing a show tonight. But it came back. <laughs> so here we go. Okay. Any questions? Thank you. Hello, Michelle. All right. So last week we did the cabin. Whoops. Now I can't. I'm going to have to turn on the light, I think, to, for you to see the cabin. I did the cabin right here, and we did this tree, and I like it, and we'll work on that an, another time, and don't, don't be afraid, uh, don't worry, but remember I told you that it's going to look awkward when you first start doing it, okay, it'll look pretty good from a distance but when you get up close you'll go well what, what is all this but remember that the thread painting the um painting it with like ink tints or fabric paints and dyes all of that is going to make it make sense it'll pull it all together all right so what i'm looking at right now is this photo that I'm using. I, this quilt is a compilation of different designs and ideas, but I used this to help me get the idea to how to put that little lake in, because I love lakes. I, I've camped on a lake since I was a toddler, and but I wanted to show you something. This is a fabric art. And that the way that that stream or waterfall is kind of coming in, it can be a little awkward to do it that way. It's hard to make it look realistic. So let me give you a hint that I'm going to give you a hint that I'm coming in at a slight angle instead of having it come right in and you can see it immediately i'm going to come at it from an angle so let me pull this a little closer still and let me try this again let me see if the oh there we go let me bring this lamp over this way all right so what I wanted to show you is instead of coming in too up and down, try to hide it a little. Like right here, I'm going to put a little of this greenery over the top of it. But kind of play peekaboo with it. Unless it is really right there at you, play a little more peekaboo. So like I put these fabrics to kind of hang over the edge. Now let me glue this part down because I like putting it under. I like putting it under this tree line over here. Okay. 
And what I'm doing right now is I'm going to make the land come out. I'm going to make the land come out in front of it. If you notice on this drawing, you can... Uh, now, this doesn't have a waterfallish kind of creek coming from the mountain. I added that myself. But I just want you to see how the lake is here. But you've got the land in front. And you've got the landforms around it. And what you're trying to do is make it, don't make it look like it was plopped down by aliens. You want to have things in front. So in effect, you're playing peekaboo with the lake too. So I think already that the waterfall is looking much better and a, a little more natural. And that's what I want. All right. So now that I have come down to this, let's see. I'll show you a couple things. I told you I use different views. This is, I got most of my mountain and the idea of two hills, one on each side from this one. And then I got the idea of extra, extra mountains from these. And in, in this one, this has some snow on it, but this doesn't. That's where I got that idea. And this is where I got the idea for the cabin. See that? And, oh, I've got a bunch more ideas for all the flowers and stuff I'm going to put in front of it. This, I got the idea of the shaggy tree line. I really like that. And here was another one that had the two hills echoed with the mountains behind. So I kind of just looked at a lot of different things. This, I got the idea of putting some tall flowers in the foreground. So, you know, I got a, a pictures. I collected a whole lot to try to get the look I wanted. Here's another one that had the good double or triple mountains. And I did like that. What I'm trying to do is not be too busy, but to add as much interest as I can without making it too busy. So I get little, now here is, here is a little lake here. And there is the tree line in the mountains there. So when you go looking around and gathering your resources, your, your, when you go and gather, I can't think of what I'm trying to say, but when you do your research, when you gather your research, because it really does help to look at photos, and you can see right here, the jaggedy tree line, which I love. And then looking at different photos and seeing how they do depth. You can see how it gets more vibrant and darker as it gets towards you. And then it fades as you go back. So that's, that's I'm just kind of touching ground again with you. So this water in the front is going to be covered up. Only about that much is going to show. Okay. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I want to work on the tree line coming from the left. And I'm kind of using, I'm liking this tree line right here. In fact, I've added some of the lighter fabric in to kind of represent those flowers. And then I cut this out and this is to represent that lighter patch of grass right there, okay? So I'm going to let me look at this again. How is everybody doing? I am so glad to see Sarah because I know you're so busy, hon. Okay, so I've got this here. I'm going to try one more time turning on the light and see what happens. I don't know. Let me let me see if I can point them away again. All right. 
I don't know if it'll work, but I'm trying to do the best. So, here, let me see. Okay, this piece is going to come in right here. All right. So, I'm going to put one drop of glue, just enough to hold it down for just a second while I work on some more. Now, one thing I probably will want to do at this point, you see how I've added different colors and different shapes here. Yes, we're tired of the snow, sweetie. We are sick of all this weird weather. I'm not ready for spring yet because spring means I have to get busy and start gardening and I'm not ready for that, but I'm ready for something different from this. All right. I'm going to want some fabrics to do a tree line with. And, ooh, here's a very good dark. All right. So this tree line, so what I'm going to do is I like that this is dark and it's a kind of avocado-ish. It doesn't have too bright of a green. Because a tree line is going to be dark, even though it's far away, but you don't want it to look too vibrant because distance makes the vibrance go away. So now what I'm going to do is I've got this tree line that I'm using here. And so I'm going to come down low. Oops, first thing I forgot to do is... Where is my tape measure? I like to measure the space that I'm going to put the fabric in. So I need to measure the space for the tree line. So I put it right here. And it looks like the tree line is going to go, oh, about 11 inches. So what I'm going to do then is mark it. 11 inches. All right, so I'm, I know that my tree line is going to fit right here because there's no sense drawing a beautiful tree line and then finding out it's only seven inches and you needed 11. So now what I'm going to do is take this, come over here. Now I noticed that your tree line um, starts up here. I'm going to kind of start up here. It goes away. Then it starts to come up a little bit. Let me. And then it comes down. And then it comes up a little bit. And then down. So it's kind of undulating. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this piece out. And don't worry, I'm going to leave this part in, even though I'll cut it away later. And here I go to, and I'm just doing a rough outcut right now because I think I want to do a little bit of the, the, the actual tree line look. Let me... All right, let's see. Okay. And then up and then down. Okay. So that's all I'm going to need of that dark, dark green. And this is going to end up going... Let me check my other, any questions, let me know. Hi, Sue Smith. Okay. I know everybody is probably having a terrible time. Oh, here, okay. I did this side from a whole different thing. So this is the one I'm supposed to be doing my tree line from. I'll do, you know what I'll do? I'll do a little bit of both. So, 
In fact, here is another tree line I can use. See this one? So I'll do a little bit of both. What I'm going to want to do is take this, this piece off. And then I'm going to bring this tree line in. I told you I would show you just as I do it so that you can really get a chance to see what I'm thinking about for this tree line. All right. All right, this is the one. I'm gonna do something between this one and this one. And I know they look alike, but they're not. Do you see the tree line? That one has a sharp, this has a sharp contrast with the mountain. This one has a green hill, then a tree line. So I'm kind of doing a little bit of both. All right. Always keep your inspiration where you can see it. You know, if I make this too dark, it's going to stand out oddly. I don't think I can, I loved how this tree line came down, but I don't think I can fully use it. So I'm gonna have to be very careful because I already have some of the hill and then to all of a sudden have too stark. Here, it's not quite as stark. Yes, the hill is lighter green, but the trees aren't as dense. So I'm gonna go ahead and start it up up there just a little and then try to put some softer they are laura the good good news is they are in the files they're kind of hard to open you have to open them one at a time i put like 30 different scenes for y'all so if you go to the io group and look i think you'd be pleased Oh, put the gloves on. Boy, you're right, Deborah Dunnell. Before I do any more cutting. Now, you know what? Since I'm going to do this as a kind of two-parter, and since I'm doing this, I'm combining two different um, inspiration photos, I'm going to take some of the excess out of this so that it, it's not quite as stark and then i'm going to do in fact this is a good time for me to wear these gloves isn't it and as i said i got two pairs from amazon for ten dollars and i found them like in the kitchen set uh it they're oyster shucker gloves and um and uh, sous chef gloves for people who do a lot of cutting. And I, I want to go ahead and tell, that's another good tip to tell you. If you're like me and you're on a budget, then if you will find that when you go to buy quilting things, that they're a lot more expensive. If you can find the same thing, but in a different style like under cooking implements it will probably be cheaper than buying them under quilting implements do you, do you know what i'm saying so i try to always look and see where can i get a better deal and because yes i'm cheap all right so i've got some of this look here for the trees and I think I'm gonna put this you know what I'm gonna have it come a little bit behind this I'm a little um fuzzy this morning I uh this evening I hate to say but okay I'm gonna have to pull this off I will put this in bring it down like that then put this in front of it. 
And I'm trying to see where I drew with my chalk so I'll know which one is the front. But I do, yeah, it comes just like this. All right. Oh, I like it. Good. That works out really well because, but before I glue this back down, I'm going to stop with this. Just come and put a few dabs at the top. Oh, and somebody, was it Deborah Donnell said, that how come I didn't have the overlay that I would pull back and forth? Last time, let me get the product out for you. Last time I used what's called golden thread. And it's a very translucent paper, golden threads. And um, I bought this roll when I first learned to do landscapes and you can tape it together with clear tape. And that way, if you wanted to draw the pattern onto the golden threads paper, then you can actually pin it to the top of the quilt you're working on and you can lay it over, see where you need to put something. And I wish now that it would have been a good idea. Not, I wanted to, make a small pattern to show you how to do the folding part to enlarge it and the easy way of drawing because for some people to try to draw this just draw it it's overwhelming so when you can do the folding method it breaks it up into 16 bytes and that makes it easier and I think, was it, De Deborah, was it you that reminded me about the overlay? They said, how come you didn't use the overlay? And I was so focused on this. But you know what? Once I drew it the size I wanted, that would have been a great time to do an overlay. Because then I could then, I would have it the size I want. And I could do all my registration points and pin it at the top and lift it up to work, lift it back down to check. So you probably will only have to buy one roll of this in your lifetime, but it is a wonderful tracing paper. And you can use it anytime you have to trace something, but it's called Golden Threads and it is wonderful. Okay, so I just wanted to cover the basis, so. Yeah, don't forget to use it because it can really make your job so much easier. And that way, before you glue something down and then say, oh, I didn't want it to look like that. If you have the golden threads paper, you can just place it where you think you want it. Pull the paper back. Make sure it looks good. Then see if you like it. And if you can check your registration points where things are, then boom. You have that. So I was very happy that you asked that. I was very, very, I love, I love, one thing I miss about going to quilt shows, I miss being able to buy fat quarter fabrics from, I mean, is this a wonderful landscape fabric? Isn't this nice? So, all right. So now I might do, a secondary, oh, I've got a couple different fabrics. Let me see. I think first I will use, and I love this. So I think somebody gave it to me. They had cut pieces to make a quilt, and they had these scraps left over, and it's perfect for me. All right, so now what I'm, I've got this. I've got my tree line here. And I'm going to finish up the tree line before I get distracted. So let me get in here and iron these really, really well. And I'm going to put them together like this. And then I'm going to fold them over like this. And this is a good time to have my scissor glove on. And then I just come in here and I cut the I cut triangles out to make the tree line. Just 
cut little bits. Whoops. Now, see, guess what? I just was cutting on the fabric. It didn't even hurt the fabric, but it saved my finger. Hopefully, I would have realized I was that close to my finger, but you never know. And you know what? I just, hold on one second, guys. Hold on just a second. Hmm. I just thought of something because cutting with those scissors was driving me nuts. So let me just try. It might not work. We might not like it. But I'm going to try doing this. I wonder if it'll make it. Because, you know, I don't like little fussy work. And then I'm going to take and even cut it like a little uneven. See that? Because the tree line isn't perfectly up and down. And I'm hoping I've trimmed off enough. Let's see. That's pretty good. Let me do a little bit more here. Oh, I, this is a lot easier. It's not as precise, but you have to tilt it back and forth so that, look at that. It's a lot easier. All right, so let me come back in. Because doing all that fussy stuff, that drives me nuts. I'm very impatient, aren't I? Oh, and the 24th, I got a, I got a note from Mancuso Quilting Show saying they're going to announce that quilts are being judged now because I sent my pink flamingo quilt to hopefully be accepted in the show. And... I don't know if that means all that they receive are accepted or what, but um, but they're going, they're going to be judged, they're ju being judged now, and we should hear from them on the night of the 24th. So I'm excited and very nervous all at the same time. <laughs> okay, so see how I'm putting these in right in front of the dark the nice thing is having the darkest fabric behind them will help show up all the little cuts i made so i'm just going to kind of lay this here so it's just below the top dark edge all right now one thing i'm going to want to do i don't want to waste this fabric but you know i really do like these scissors it just takes my mind off of worrying that I'm going to cut myself again because the place I cut myself the last time it if I hit it just right it still hurts so now what I'm going to do is just put a couple little now normally I use school glue but I forgot where it is this moment and I saw that when I grabbed it so okay so what I'm going to do is go ahead and put a couple dots, just a couple dots is all you need. If you put too much glue, it's hard to sew through. So now here, I'm going to trim this just a little. I'm going to trim this just a little because I needed it to follow the tree line more. All right. Then I'm going to take this, and I'm going to first kind of follow that tree line so I have the basics before I do the, the, the little fussy cutting. So that part's done. So now I just put this together, try to get, you know, you have to kind of turn it so you can try to get the edges kind of close together. And then, <laughs> where did I, now I just had, did anybody see where I put my cutting mat? And uh, <laughs> what did I, oh, here it is. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Okay, now there's my cutter. You know, it's so funny. I, when I work, I don't, I, I get so involved in creating 
that I just don't even stop sometimes and realize what I'm doing. I'm just, I get in the zone. There are times Mark will talk to me and I don't even hear him because I am so focused. So I either am a squirrel type who doesn't focus enough or focus too much. You know how that is. All right. I like now doing that. I like the doing the rotary cutter way. I, I think it, it, it's much easier, faster, simpler. And it's nice knowing I've got those gloves on using that cutter like that. I'm putting my mat right over here. So <laughs> if I forget again, okay, here we go. Oh. Uh -oh. Putting this here. Now, I like the way this is looking, but I want to come back and add this. So, I think I'll put this on top. Wow. Oh. Hmm. I think... Let me see. I think I'm going to trim this off right now. All right. I want this grass to cover up the tree zone. This is going to go on like this. And I'm not in a too big of a rush to glue much down. Just a dot or two. Okay. All right, then I will bring this part of the grass over, over this. And I need this part to come down some. You're always adapting and ch changing as you go. Okay, that's the one thing that's fun about it too. So now I'm going to put a couple little dots on here. And you notice I only put the glue on the top because I'm always lifting it up, moving it around. Okay. Yes, I like that. Okay. And then this is going to come down. Hmm. This, well, let me see. Okay, pull that up just a little. And now this is going to... Hmm. No, let me see. Hold on. I forgot how I cut this. I think I cut it this way. Okay. This one's going to come here. All right. Now, what I need to do let me see. I'm looking for good fabric. And see what I'm having is I'm having an a, a, a relatively level edge of the pond, but having the shoreline be in and out because that's what shorelines and little lakes and rivers do. So I'll bring that down to there. Wait a minute. I think I glued this wrong. I think, hold on, let me see. I think this was supposed to go this way. So, let me get my glue off the front. Another reason to be glad just to use little bits and put it on the back. Do you see why I have fun doing this? Because I don't stand on ceremony. I just do what makes me happy, what's fun. All right, so this is going to go right there, right? Any questions, anybody? 
Oh, thank you, Laura. That is very kind of you to say that. Thank you so much. All right. Now, now what I want to do is look back at my inspirations. I noticed there's a little bit. Okay, I'm looking at where the tree line. Let, let me check these. I'm looking at the edge of the water. I don't know. I absolutely love this fabric, but I'm not sure that I have a place for it right now. But boy, I love that. I don't want to make this too dark because this side with the cabin, I think it's kind of time to start introducing my brights. So, even though I really love this, Maybe I can do a small line of it. Let me try something here. You know, the nice thing about this being our landscape and we're the boss of this, so we can make it whatever we want. Okay, all right, so now okay, let's see if I can sneak in a piece of this. I've got where is it? Whoops. Whoops. Okay, hold on. Oh, it's over here. All right, so mainly I like this version, okay? So I think I can add just a little bit. Hmm. Yes, it could, okay. It could be like a shrubbery line. This right here. So it kind of, this one's not going to be, this one's going to be a little more level. You see that? All right, so I'm going to leave it just like this for right now. I might come back and make it more distinct into shrubs, trees. I'll decide what I want to use it as. Okay, so I'm really showing you what I like and don't like, but I love this green hill. I love that tree line. So what I'm trying to do is figure out how to have both of everything. <laughs> I like it all. <laughs> all right. So I can always change the shape of this a little bit later. But now what I want to get done is I want... I've got the tree line here, and I've got the green mountain and a tree line here. What I need to do is decide what I'm going to do that's going to come in the front of this, of this little lake. So I'm looking back at that because that's my best picture of a lake. I don't want to come that quite that dark. All right. So now what I think I need to do is I've, I've got... A hill coming here. This hill is right here. And then we've got the meadow in between. So, let's see. I've got this. This is what I already used over in front of the cabin. So now, I have this one. And I have this one. And I have this one. So what I'm going to try to decide is what's going to go on this side. This might be the best for right in the front. It's closer to you, so it should be more distinct. What do you think? Yeah, that's a good idea too, Jody. I'm thinking that for this side... Because I've got a line here for this, where the hill is. I'm thinking for this side to, whoops, 
I think it's upside down. So I think it's so funny. It's hard to tell. It is so hard to tell what is upside down and what is right side up. I think they do it on purpose so that you can use it in all different ways. So this is going, I wanted I wanted to have a hill this way and a hill this way with the meadow in the middle. Let me see if there's kind of like this. And then I made this side, I made this side taller. And, but I'm trying to create this look and then our meadow is going to be in the middle. So you can, you get a chance to see that I use all kinds of different bits and pieces of that of all of these. I look and look and look and try to figure it out. So what I'm going to do, I'm pretty sure, pretty sure, is I'm going to put this here. Okay. Now let me... All right, let me get my chalk pen. Get my chalk pen. I like that this is a little fuzzy because now I could use this one over here and that's a little fuzzy, but somehow I like that this one, that the one by the cabin is a little brighter and has like the sun coming. I think I want this one to be calmer. So this piece is going to go like this. And I love tearing fabric. So I make a nip and I tear it. And this is going to be about, yeah, about like that. And then don't forget, if you, you cut it at least a half an inch more than you want the finished product to be. Because you're always overlapping. So this has got to go under something. Right? All right. So now, this is going to go right here. Okay? So this is going to be the other kind of hill. And anything that's on this... I will make sure, okay, let me see something. Mm, I have to look at something to get it. All right, so I want this to come this way. I'm going to put the drops of glue about an inch down because I'm going to take some time and decide just how I want this to look, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and do this. All right. Now, I've got that. Now I've got to work out something to go right in front of this pond. I think I'm going to go back to that fun fabric that I was so in love with. And this is going to be the front of my pond. So I'm going to come here. Do y'all save your selvages? I've got a huge bag full of selvages. And I know I'm going to use them. I just haven't decided when. All right, and I'm kind of cutting this uneven, but I'm leaving a lot of the light green part because I'm going to turn it over. And I'm thinking this might be good for the front of the lake pond, whatever. I keep changing my terminology. Sorry about that. But let me get back to the one that has the little lake. Okay. Although, I tell you what, that looks more like a bend in the river. But, okay. I kind of want this. Let me see. Okay. What this, the reason I keep looking and looking is I'm trying to decide how this is going to lay out. And what I mean by that is 
where I need to define the bottom edge of this lake. And how do I do it? See right here, you have a low area. Then all of a sudden, you have some shrubs that kind of pop up right there. So what I'm going to do is try to figure out how I want to do that. And I think, and I don't want the lake very deep because that's not the star of this. The star of this quilt is going to be our meadow. So I think I like that. I think I like it. So I need to find out how to, how I'm now I have to figure how am I going to run it in? How do I abut it up to this one? So I'm going to do a couple little spots of glue where I know I like it. Like this. And then I've got to decide who ends up on top. So I think I'm going to let this one go underneath. So I'll cut the excess off of that. I think this is going to go up top. And now I have to find a way to join those together. So, and you know what I'm going to do? I think I'm going to take this fabric and kind of do it in pieces, a little bit in pieces, because the edges are never that defi well defined. If you look in nature, you can smooch a lot of things, let me tell you. So I think something like that, having that little bit of space in between, I think will look more realistic. Like right like that, something like that, okay? So I left just the tiniest bit of dark show through right here. And then I can always change everything, so don't worry. So now, now that I have the transition fabric, transition from, and in fact, you know what I might want to do is put this up here a little. Maybe right there. Okay, let me get my iron. All right. So now is the meadow. This is the shining star of this quilt. Okay. And I haven't decided how I'm ending this. I will figure that out later. I'm wondering... I don't know if I want this the whole way. Do y'all have any idea? Ah, I see what you're saying. Well, some, I want the water to be big. You know what I find with this? It's something I have to fight myself on all the time. I somehow, sometimes try to make it harder than it is. I try to make it more complex than it is. And I sometimes just need to chill down a little bit. <laughs> and I don't know if y'all are like that. But sometimes it's keep it simple, stupid. It's the good old, um, that good old kiss method. But if you find you're fighting with your work, step back and simplify. The more I... I Oh my gosh, I've been working with polymer clay the last couple of days. You want to talk about somebody who tries to make everything over the top? And I end up going, gee, I, I, I either roll it to the, through the rollers too often. Oh, now it's too blended and I don't like it. I mean, I, I can be a mess, you know. So if you, if you start doing this, Sometimes you have to just walk away because you get yourself into such a rut that you're like, you, you want too much. You want it too badly. And 
Simplify. In fact, you know what Mark tells me all the time? Edit, Deb. Edit. And he's right. I just sometimes need to just edit it. So, okay. And less is more in so many things in this life, including quilting. And I try to put too much. I'll never forget. I got I got to tell y'all this. Okay, Miss Judy Lilly gave me one of my first Mar Marjan Klupfel and Judy Lilly gave me my first classes in art quilting, landscape quilting. And so I did this magnolia blossom. I'll have to bring it down for next week. I did this magnolia quilt and she was trying to teach us to lay yeah, exactly. You weren't trying to make it too perfect. And nature is not perfect. And let your eye do some of the filling in. If it's too much, if it's, if you put everything in and your eye doesn't have a chance to make connections, you don't bond with it. It's like a bakery cake that's so overdone. It's too much. So leave a little space for your eye to enjoy and kind of play with it. Because your eye will fill stuff in. Trust me. That's the truth. So we did this magnolia quilt and she was trying to teach us about color and value and foreground and background. Well, when it came time to do the thread painting, I got so carried away with the thread painting that I thread painted it until it became like tapestry. I thread painted everything on it. I thought I had done this beautiful thing. So I took another class from her. When I went in to take that class, I was so proud. And I showed her my quilt. And she goes, oh, wow. And then later I went up and said, was there something about that? She said, you overdid the thread painting, in my opinion. She said, whatever makes you happy. But... You covered all the fabric. The fabric that you worked so hard to find the lights, mediums, and darks, and the shadows, and all that. You covered it all up with thread. That's, that was a powerful lesson, and I'm so glad she shared it with me. Because sometimes when you're teaching, you hate to hurt somebody's feelings. But you know what? If they want to know, please tell them. Because that's the only way you can grow and become a better artist. So I understand that need to want to do too much. And it's knowing when to stop, knowing when to pull back a little bit. Editing is my biggest problem. So that's what I'm trying to teach you. I'm trying to show you how I do things so that you can kind of see when I decide to move forward and when I have to take a step back. So, okay. We're almost out of time. I've um, got a few more minutes. I would like to get this bottom part of the meadow down. And then what we're going to do when you get to that stage and have the final large piece of fabric, then you get your invisible thread and you do a zigzag stitch and you carefully zigzag all over it. You use the smoky invisible thread for the dark areas. You use the clear invisible for the light areas. If you don't have the invisible thread, do not worry. Just find threads that you already have that are close to that, that color value, the, 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 the value, the light and dark mainly, um, or use a really good gray that can kind of disappear. It's amazing. Grays are amazing. But what you have to do, if you don't have the invisible thread, unspool about two feet of the thread, lay it, drape it all around on top of where you're going to sew. That will really help you see which one disappears. And I do that with all when I'm doing my quilting or whatever, you have to pull some thread and pull it on the fabric to see what it's really going to look like. You can't just put the thread next to it and go, oh, isn't that pretty? No, you have to do it a a strand of thread pulled over. So let's finish this up so we can move to the next thing for next week. All right. So 
All right. I need to have enough of this. I think that I'm going to have to, okay, put that there, put that there. I'm going to have to cut some more of this. And I like this, and I'm probably going to have to, let me see if I can trim a little of this back. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. That's good. That is good. I like it. Now I'm going to need a piece to kind of come over here. And I don't really think I need all that much. You know, it's very nice to have these scissors. Because I realize I cut things so quickly. I'm so comfortable with these scissors. That I tend to forget that they are scissors. Okay, so see this? I like that. That way it gives trans, whoops. I just put this piece in right here and it gives a nice transition. All right. Now I'm going to come in with this. Normally I don't do something that looks so much like grass. But we, I, the, let me tell you why I like this. I like this because it has all different colors of green. It means I'll have to do less of the thread painting. So what I'm going to do here, I want to get a solid piece for right here. I can do pieces, little scraps there. But I want to, now I'm trying to look. Hold on just a second. I'm still looking at this. I'm wondering if I want to, yes. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do this in several stages. I don't want to have too much. We're trying for depth. We are trying for to get the distancing away. We want to make sure that we look like this field is a thousand feet or more deep. So now if I were to come in and put this here, oh, I like this. I'll put that there. Yeah, something like that. And then I will come in with this. I'm trying to decide. I don't have a wide enough piece to do it all at once. So let me see. Hold on just a second. I'm going to put this piece under over here. Okay, there. I like that. And you know what you can also do is leave a torn edge. You can leave a torn edge up here because a torn edge can really give it a softened look. So I tucked it under both different sides. Then I will come in and put this under that. Let me get my, I take all my selvages off and I'm gonna tell you why. Selvages are very thick and unforgiving they don't stretch and move. And if you leave a selvage, you can feel it. I mean, that stuff is, selvages have to be tough. So, and what I am going to end up doing is I'm going to take and do something like that. So, and I'm going to soften up both of these edges. All right. This is going to go underneath here. I like it. All right. So what I need to do now is do because remember, there are no straight lines in nature. If you think a tree is a straight line, you'll be surprised. Trees are never straight. Even a pine tree is, can be very graduated.
All right. And I need to do something. I need to figure that corner out better. But now I'm going to come here. That was risky to do that because if you don't have already have a torn edge of the fabric, you don't know where the straight of grain is. So I took a big chance doing that. <laughs> All right. Now I am going to quickly glue some things down so I can hold it up and show you. Okay. Let me try to, I don't know if this is exactly where I've got to do this edge better. But for right now, I'm going to just glue it so that I can hold this up and show it to you. Okay, let me glue this. Yep, that's glued. And understand, I'm just going to patch in the same this same stuff right over here. All right. Close up my glue. I have been known to leave a glue bottle open all night. I get so excited to hurry up and see the final part that I tend to forget to close things. So, all right. Let's see if you think I might be on the right track. Whoops. Oh, I thought that might happen. Hold on. It's such a heavy piece of fabric. It, I didn't glue it enough. I'm going to take, hold on, I'm going to take some pins and hold it down. But that's a heavy piece of fabric. All right. I told you I don't put much glue. All right. So I'm going to tape, pin this down. This is where I'll use these tiny little applique pins because they are wonderful. That way... They don't show as much. I can take this off now. Because it's hard to pick up pins when you have a glove on. But anyway. All right. I was determined that we were going to get this, the color all laid out on this tonight. So sorry. I have been just, I've been being serious. But I wanted to make sure that we could get the color blocking done tonight. So then we can start on the next step. So, here we go. Now, I, I have a little bit of a problem with some of this. I am going to have to go in there and lighten it up a little. But, I really do like, I really do like the different contrast of the meadows. And, we can go in and adjust we can go in and adjust everything we've put in there with our paints and ink tints and thread painting. You can soften, give a little bit more depth. I think some of that dark I put in, I know I love that fabric. It's too dark. So I'm going to have to, I want to keep a little bit of it, but I'm going to have to put another little strip of fabric. All right. Are there any questions that you might have? <laughs> you, you know what you just fabric it's like cutting when you were a kid I loved art time I loved having construction paper and those cute little scissors they used to give us and we could cut and paste we didn't worry back then we just cut and paste and and we loved it and I try to do that with my landscape quilting I try to remember the kid in me and just have fun. You'll see I moved my under C quilt a little closer. And because I, that was tons of fun. Just turning little bits and things and just gluing and pasting and trying this and trying that. And it, it that's what it should be. Just be, make it fun. If you find you're getting too stressed or too tense or too unhappy, step back.
take a nice break, a day, a week, come back at it with fresh eyes and, and tell yourself, deep, breathe deeply and edit. <laughs> so, because, you know, when I first started landscaping, everywhere on that picture that it had a little lighter or darker and I was like, I've got to do every line darker, lighter. You can't, you can't do it all and you don't need to. Oh, you like my whale? I, I'll have to bring him closer next week because um, I wanted that to be my surprise that you're looking at this underwater and all of a sudden you realize that's a whale's eye looking at you. <laughs> So we have a lot of fun. We did that in Art Quilt Thursdays last year. And uh, it's almost done. It's almost. I have a few little hand things, neatening, tidying. It's already been quilted. And I need to decide how I'm going to put a border or binding or what am I go I'm going to do. But I, And then I want to get it in really good shape. Because guess what? There's bound to be another quilt show I can enter it in. I'm having such fun entering my art quilts I guess because art is so subjective and if some one person doesn't like it somebody else might it has freed me to enjoy the thought of entering quilts in a show so oh uh, y'all are just oh thank you sweetheart let me see if I I don't know if I can reach it enough to bring it close but I do love my whale, and I love there to be something, a surprise in every quilt I do. So let me see. Maybe I can put the light on him, because he, he's definitely creating a lot of shadow. But do you see his eye? And that's what I wanted him so subtle that you'd come in to look and see what I had, and all of a sudden you realize that's an eye looking back at you. Isn't that neat? So, you know, there is so much fun to be had in art quilting. I, I love all quilting, and I make all different kinds of quilts, but my heart soars with art quilting. That's when me comes out. My sense of humor, or not, <laughs> my um, sense of play, all of that comes out. Um, when I have to do a regular quilt, a pieced quilt, I feel a little constricted with trying to be so careful to cut and so careful to piece and so careful that everything is meets and matches. That gets exhausting to me. When you let me loose with fabric and scissors, I play and it is a joy. So I hope that you will find that art quilting might be something in your that becomes more and more part of your future. And when you come back next week, we will continue on because we got a lot of fun things to add. So I can't wait. It now it's like the hard work has happened. Now the easy stuff, you know, the fun parts. In fact, I even added a little bit more snow to my mountain. And this, this puppy is going to come to life. You're getting ready to add the life to it. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. And uh, I just want you to have a lot of fun because it should be playtime. We have to pay our bills. We have to clean the house. We have to go to the doctor. So art quilting is something we do just because we love it. So thank you so much. Oh, there's Miss Polly. Polly, did you lose power today? I was worried about you. We lost power between 9.30 in the morning and 11.30. And it was so cute, I got to tell you. It, it just, there's something very, when you lose power, you feel like you're cut off from the world. You're in your own little cocoon. And we had fun. Mark and I were talking. We were talking stories about when he was in high school. And it just felt nice. He didn't have to be over at his computer working because nothing was on. And all of a sudden, the power came back on. And part of me was sad. <laughs> you know, the part of me that didn't like to be cold. And 
<laughs> but anyway, it was, you know, you take good care of yourself. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sweethearts. Y'all mean so much to me. And you keep me inspired to do this. And I love it. So thank you so much. It dropped me an email. If you have any questions about this or something, you can't get something to work right. You can send me pictures, send me questions to that hour time to quilt at TWC.com. And I'll answer them because I'm here to help you have fun making art quilts. So take good care. I will see you next week. Bye-bye, guys. Take care. Stay warm. Everybody take good care of yourself.